Today is the sixth Sunday in Lent. Each Sunday in this season, we are pounding a nail into our cross and remembering how that na nail caused Jesus to suffer for us. This morning, the sixth nail is used to hang a sign symbolically over Jesus' head, identifying him as the king of the Jews. On Palm Sunday, he had been acclaimed a conquering hero by those who believed in him. On Good Friday, he had been condemned to die by those who couldn't accept him. Now, as he hung on the cross, he was mourned by those who loved him and mocked by those who rejected him. His pain was relieved only by the knowledge that he had obeyed the God who had given his only son to die for humanity. With his life finished, Jesus died to save us from our sins. It was as Philippians says, he walked the path of obedience all the way to his death on the cross. Because he was obedient, he can be our king today if we will accept him. Let us pray. God of all that is, we crown you king of our lives. Let us live in such a way as to give you glory, never in ways that bring sadness to you. Rule every moment of our lives, we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. You'll notice this year that our palms are a little different. They've already been made into the shape of a cross for you. We bought those palms, uh, and there's a little note on the back of the bulletin. You can find that information there. They're made by artisans in India, and they support a children's home and a children's ministry there. And they become a significant reminder to us of who Jesus is. The palms on Palm Sunday were cut fresh from trees and laid down in his path. Others, I'm sure, were carrying the, the branch that they brought from the Sukkoth festival from the previous fall when they built the tabernacle out in the field. They would save one remnant branch to use to light the Passover fire. Some of them laid down their cloaks in front of Jesus. I remember asking the question as a child, why don't we call it Cloak Sunday? Don't suppose we'll change the whole of the Christian church for that. But it's a day when nothing should be more important to us than the proclamation of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bible to Matthew chapter 21, and we'll read verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 21 and beginning our reading with verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna 
to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May God's blessing be added to the reading and the hearing of his word. I thought, think I've told you this portion of Palm Sunday for 14 years, and you're going to hear it again. That when a king was coming to a city, if he was riding on a horse, he was coming for war. If he was riding on a donkey, he was coming for peace. Jesus enters into Jerusalem this day, to bring peace, to make reconciliation between the Lord and us, to be the means of salvation for us, that when his blood was shed on the cross, that we would have redemption and forgiveness of sin. Next Sunday we celebrate the resurrection, the completion of the picture. Salvation happens on Friday when the shed blood of Jesus Christ is made. It is salvation. But the completion of the story is that death doesn't have victory. And that sin does not have victory. That Jesus has victory by being triumphant over sin and death. But this day is the day of the palms. Jesus is heading to Jerusalem for a purpose. The gospel says he turned his face towards Jerusalem. He knew exactly why he was coming to Jerusalem. He knew exactly what was going to be happening to him. The rest of the crowd had no clue. Even his disciples whom he had told didn't seem to be able to grasp it. And I'm not trying to be hard on them. I'm empathetic towards them. I'm not sure that any of us could have understood exactly how this was going to unfold. But oh, the parade day. After the Super Bowl this year, they had a parade in Philadelphia. And, I don't know, millions of people gathered to celebrate. Even if you were in Philadelphia and weren't an Eagles fan, I suspect on that day you were an Eagles fan. My brother called me and said, I think I just saw Kim Ginter, which would really be ironic since she was rooting for the other team. Everybody was an Eagles fan that day. On this day, everybody is a Jesus fan. We like to get swept up in the crowd. I took my one uncle up to a Penn State game a number of years ago. He's not particularly a football fan, but he was interested in going along. He didn't understand really what was happening on the field because he's never really followed football all that well. But about the second quarter, he got caught up in the crowd and was screaming his head off when the Penn State runner broke through the line and ran for 80 yards for a touchdown. He got caught up in the moment. He became a fan that day. Francis Chan, I believe it is, wrote a book a number of years ago about not being a fan but being a follower. It's great to be a fan. There's nothing wrong with being a fan, but it's better to be a follower. There's several things that intrigue me in this story that I want to share with you from Matthew's perspective. Matthew correctly points out to us the fulfillment of the prophecy that we see in Zechariah there, chapter 9 and verse 9, where it says, Behold, O daughters of Jerusalem, your king comes riding to you on a colt on the foal of a donkey. 
And that's why Jesus comes riding in on that day. He comes to bring peace. And peace is made for us through the reconciliation that happens when the blood is applied to our lives. The whole crowd gets into this. You see that by reading that text there. Some people are laying their coats down in front of him. Some people are cutting branches off of trees. Everybody is shouting, Hosanna! What does that mean? Hosanna. It means Savior. Salvation. Salvation in the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Salvation in the Son of David. Do you know that all of you speak Hebrew? There's one word for sure that you have all spoken. Hallelujah. It's a Hebrew word. You know what the translation of hallelujah is? Hallelujah. It's its own translation. Everybody knows what it means, even though if you can't quite meticulously identify it. The crowd is there as Jesus comes riding by. Everyone is throwing their coat down. Everyone is cutting a branch off a tree. Everyone is shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! to the son of David. Salvation from the son of David. What a moment it must have been. <coughs> but here's the problem. It didn't seem to last long. I think it was last Sunday in Sunday school I asked the question, who won the most recent Super Bowl? And you were pretty good at that, you knew the answer to that. And then I asked the question, who won the World Series last year? And Doug knew the answer. But most everybody else was sitting there thinking, oh, I remember watching this series, and uh, was it the, yeah, it was the Houston Astros. How quickly we forget what seems to be a momentous occasion. And that's exactly what happens to this crowd. They are the ones who are caught up in the excitement. They're the ones who are cutting the branches and throwing their cloaks down. And they're shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Salvation from the Son of David. And when they finally enter in to Jerusalem, look at that last verse. If you still have your Bible open there. And the crowd asks, who is this? Does anyone answer? He is the Savior who is coming. No. He is a prophet from Nazareth. Just five minutes before, you proclaimed him the Savior. Hosanna in the son of David. And five minutes later, you've relegated him simply to being a prophet. How quick. We're here today in celebration of this great and momentous occasion of Jesus riding into Jerusalem to bring salvation for the world. Not just for the Jews, but for every one of us. He has given his life as a ransom for our sins on the cross. He comes riding in on this donkey on this day to fulfill prophecy and to be our Savior. And for thousands and thousands of years, the Jews have been waiting for the Messiah to come. And they should have realized that they're out there shouting his praises. Hosanna! Who is this? It's Jesus of Nazareth. He's a prophet. There are many times when people mouth the words. But 
but don't have it in their heart. How many times do you suppose somebody has looked at somebody else and said, I love you? And they don't. I love you for the moment that I'm going to take advantage of you. I love you for what I can get from you. But I love you and am I willing to lay my life down for you? That's a different matter, isn't it? How many times you suppose people have said, Jesus, I want you to come into my life, and then we pay no attention to him in our daily life. We simply want him to be fire insurance. Hosanna. Salvation from the son of David. They're shouting this with their lips in one moment, and the very next moment they can fail to identify him. Yes, it's true, he is Jesus, who is a prophet from Nazareth. But he's so much more. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah for whom we have been waiting for thousands of years. And we see the prophecy being fulfilled. Let's not forget that. Oh, daughters of Israel, look! Your Savior is coming to you, riding on a donkey, on the colt of a donkey. <coughs> and what does it mean when we say the words, but have it not in our heart? I used to hear pastors say, sometimes people miss heaven by 12 inches. The distance from here to here. They have a knowledge of who Jesus is, but they haven't given their life over. They simply want Jesus to care for me and make sure everything's all right for me and make sure I'm going to get to heaven, but don't bother me during the week, Jesus. I'll, you know, you and I are good on Sunday for an hour. But the other 167 hours are mine. I think he's shouting, Hosanna. <laughs> and that's sweet music to hear. How marvelous it is for us to shout Hosanna. How more marvelous it is for us to live it. To put it into action. By being the Christian. You know what Christian means? Christian means a little Christ. A little model of Christ. If you call yourself a Christian, people look at you and they should see Jesus. A small representation of what it means to be Jesus. I don't know about you, but it's a little scary for me sometimes to think that I might be the only Jesus that somebody's ever met. Have I done a good job with that? It's easy for us to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But when someone asks us, who is this? May we be able to say, this is the Savior. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. What a Savior. 
Heavenly Father, on this Palm Sunday, it is our desire to not only shout Hosanna and shout blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but it's our desire to do that on Monday and on Tuesday and every other day of the week. That Jesus might not just be a moment for us, but that Jesus might be 